Right. Hey, this is Catherine Fulton from the Reykjavik Grapevine. I'm here with Art Bicknick and we're in the town of Grindavik. It's March 17th and we're checking in on the latest eruption that began here last night. We are actually standing here on one of the berms, one of the um, defensive walls that has been erected to protect uh, the town of Grindavik, which is over to this direction. And as you can see, the lava flow uh, coming from the eruption that started last night at around 23 minutes after 8 in the evening, uh, the flow that was heading southward has come here and is pooling up against these defensive walls. Uh, it was moving at a rate of about a, one kilometer an hour, but it slowed to only about 20 meters per hour. So the flow is slowing down. Uh, last night, the fissure, which opened up between Hagafell and Storskogafell, uh, was three kilometers long, but it has since been reduced down to three eruptive cones along that fissure. Uh, this lava was flowing southwards towards the ocean, which is not far uh, there. And you can see the settlement of Hrøynivit Grindavik down there by the sea, uh, which is now fearful that the lava could reach them. But as I said, it slowed down quite a bit. Uh, you can see there's very little, uh, very little movement of the lava here against the berm at this time. Um, this is the fourth eruption. This is the fourth eruption in as many months here on the Reykjanes Peninsula. Uh, the last one, which happened in February, lasted only about 24 hours. Uh, this one has slowed down quite a bit already as well, but time will tell if or when it stops. Uh, all these eruptions and a, and a dike intrusion that took place just earlier this month uh, are all being fed by the magma reservoir that's under Svartengi area. Uh, Svartengi being a power plant that feeds the hot water to the Blue Lagoon. Uh, and what's happening is it, it fills up and then that lava needs somewhere to go. So it's creating these intrusions or in this case, as began last night, this eruption. Um, it's really remarkable to see uh, this, this magma, this burning hot magma crumbling forward uh, and, and just the heat distortions in the air, it's, it's really remarkable. Uh, we are here on a press tour, of course. The area is completely closed off to the general public, so don't try and come here on your own. It's absolutely not safe for, for looky-loos and just tourists to come and and have a peek. We're, we're accompanied by police and other officials here. Um, Christian, Christian Jonsdottir from the Met Office uh, identified the probably the biggest risk of this eruption at this point in time is if this lava, which I said is only moving about 200 meters per second at this point, or 200 meters per hour at this point, sorry, uh, if it were to make its way to the sea, what would happen is an alkaline substance like magma, uh, as volcanologists have seen in Hawaii, um, when an alkaline substance like magma meets seawater, uh, it creates a reaction that would, would, would create chlorine gas. Uh, and then depending on which way the wind is blowing, of course, chlorine gas is, is very, very dangerous. And that's not something you want blowing into, into a settlement and having people inhale. Um, everyone here that's on this press tour is equipped with gas masks in case the wind direction changes. Right now, the wind is coming in from the sea, so blowing all of the gas away from us who are visiting here with the police. Um, but yeah, so for now, so for now, we'll just uh, keep an eye on the situation.
All right, so we're back down here on the ground. Uh, this incredible lava flow behind me, as I said, advancing at about just uh, 20 meters per hour. Uh, we at the Grapevine are going to continue covering this latest eruption, so we'll keep you updated uh, with any new developments on grapevine.is. So check there for ongoing news coverage of this eruption, everything else in Iceland. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Stay safe.